Hello my Sock Universe and welcome to my review of the two draws that happened yesterday of the Europa League and the new Europa Conference League. Um, just FYI behind me, those are all the jerseys, those are jerseys that I have of the top teams in my collection for the Europa League and here I put the Conference League. Uh, and thanks to my wife, she gave me the idea. I, I was wondering how I should I do it. Should, should I really split it that way? My problem was always that the jerseys, I, I, I would hang it top to bottom, but then you don't really see the top teams in the Europa League, which is Spurs and Roma. And she said, well, do it bottom to top. It makes a whole lot of sense. The top teams in the Europa League are, of course, still up there. So just want to thank my wife for giving me that great idea because it actually really makes a whole lot of sense to do it this way. Uh, for this season, I have decided a, to put those two competitions together and not make separate videos because they are played on the same day. Uh, I know it will be a whole lot of games to cover. And yes, my favorite team is in the Conference League, so you will get conf conf Conference League. That's, I also have to say that when I look at the teams in both competitions, actually the Conference League to me is a little bit more interesting because there are three teams that I really, really like in there where I struggle a little bit with the Europa League. Although I have to say the Europa League take... Uh, take four groups away and the Europa League becomes actually quite an interesting competition as we will see. Now uh, I'm I was thinking of going all through the qualifying rounds and so on showing you that like I did for the Champions League a full analysis of all the draws um, and while I could do that it would have cost me at least three more hours I think to work on that because I didn't get to it let's put it that way and I need to get some <laughs> life back as well because after work I have been the last uh, this week I have been almost exclusively with them working on the channel and that is then the balance that I'm missing especially now with my family being back so I need to achieve a little bit more balance again and that's why um, you get how the draw is you get my personal opinion on each of the groups, uh, what are the chances of my model, uh, and then we'll look at who are the favorites to win it, and that will be it. You will get a little bit of qualification because I will start with the Conference League, because the only things that I saw in the Conference League were the last games, and not the all oh, that I followed, were actually the last games, and I saw the one for the playoffs. So very, very quickly, last cat to uh, jump into at round three. They got uh, Vojvodina from Novi Sad, uh, Serbia. And the first game was away from home, which was, uh, you know, controlling the game was ra ra rather tough. Vojvodina, uh, or Vojvodina, I think it's called, once hit even the post in the second half, but in, in, in the end, Lask proved to be too good in the wide range shot from Michal sent them through. The return leg was rather dicey fair. I think Vojvodin not even took the lead, but Lask could equalize. So it was the other winner. says 1-1 at the half. Uh, it seemed like a finely balanced match and then Lask scored within a few minutes and it ended in a 6-1, which was probably... Everyone thought this is now giving the release for Lask to move on well into the season. It did not happen, but at least uh, when it clicks, and you have broken down the opponent that gave me the, the feeling that Lask can actually do something. However, um, the next opponent was either Galatasaray or St. Johnston. St. Johnston did not knock out Galatasaray in the Europa League um, uh, playoff round three. And so it was St. Johnston from Scotland. I actually was a little bit hoping Galatasaray because A, you would get some spectators in Klagenfurt. Lask has to play now the European Games in Klagenfurt, which is a four hour drive from Linz because the, a smaller stadium but much closer in St. Pölten is not available because the grass is completely ruined, even the home team, the Akanika can play. The stadium just got torn down because we, could be, we are building a new one and that is already delayed. It was supposed to be ready in about a year from now. Now we are already talking a probably two-year building, so that's not great. And you cannot, you cannot play in Salzburg, you cannot really play in Vienna and playing in the Ernst Hopper Stadion is not good. So. Although I think you would get more fans into the Ernst Happer Stadion, to be honest, because uh, Vienna is a much easier drive for uh, from Linz than is Klagenfurt. 
But hey, Klangfurt it is. It is the most beautiful stadium in Austria, but it's not uh, so great. The game against St. Charles, especially in the first half, was just horrible. Uh, it started out well for uh, like uh, two minutes. Yes, there were many injuries also from last side uh, in defense. Suddenly we had to play with a makeshift defense. Um, we could have scored, I think, with uh, one of the new guys, Bola, uh, in the first the two minutes or so. But then St. Johnson completely took all the way the strength and concentrated. It was very physically and they got actually the first goal. A second half, Lusk then got a penalty. They tried, uh, could equalize uh, and then very little they hit the post. Uh, probably would have been deserved to win 2-1. But on the other side, the first half showing was so bad that I was even actually saying, you know, with all the injuries again there, that we might not be the worst thing if we don't even qualify for that group stage or uh, as embarrassing as it might have been. However, um, I saw on Thursday the return leg and I have to say this was a much more positive showing. Yes, St. Johnston was physically and gave them again some trouble. And as always this season, in the first half, uh, Lask has trouble. And then they make the right adjustments, which actually tell, tells me the coach is doing a good job. And so, yeah, in the second half, uh, they finally get the break today for, I think, the first 10, 15 minutes. They were really pressing for the goal. Cool fight and St. Johnston had uh, two chances, but uh, then finally, um, Balic, who came, came on, makes, the, ma makes it 1-0 and then St. Johnston take themselves out by uh, getting two red cards and then the penalty you know, sets it. Lask's way, Ragush gets back on the scoring sheet and so Lask moves on into the new Conference League where, and now we're going to start in the Conference League, they find themselves in pot one. That was to me surprising because uh, this just doesn't drive. But then if you look at the teams in the Conference League, I think pots one and two sound still kind of all right. But I think starting with pot three and four, you see this is really now the third league. There's a huge gap then. Uh, I give you Union, I give you Vitesse and, you know, maybe in the first half, but then it really, really, really gets into territory where you think, yeah, um, those are not so great teams. But then on the other side, I have to say, I am very happy that uh, teams from these countries can actually go into European groups. So when the car conference is, is again achieving something good, I mean, we have the Lincoln Red Imps from Gibraltar in there. That, uh, from one side, uh -huh, not very attractive, from the other side, it's great that Gibraltar can have a team in, in there. Same thing goes for Finland. It goes for, we have a team from Estonia, Armenia, uh, Kazakhstan. So, um, spreading it around, very good, but I have to say, uh, attractive, not that. And then we saw the draw, and Lask gets in a group with uh, Maccabi Tete Tel Aviv, which is definitely the toughest opponent. Alash Gerd from Armenia, which I just got to know when I was looking into the Champions League qualification rounds. And a uh, HJK uh, from Helsinki. Uh, I have to say, I'm not the most attractive group, but a group that you would think that you can get out of. I have to say, I actually want to play against Feyenoord because of Trauna. Uh, having that uh, and then potentially getting the Lincoln Red Imps because that would be just fun to have a team play against a team from Gibraltar. So um, ha having to go to Armenia and Israel, those are two options that I'm not too, although Maccabi Tether is probably the most attractive opponent in there, but still not something that I would be very excited about. Of course, uh, Pauk is also in there, which is another team that I really like. Uh, they got not an easy group, but they got the Lincoln Red Ames. I think Copenhagen and Sl uh, will be a tough test. And I think they were once eliminated in the re re recently by Slovan to not make it in the Europa League. So uh, there is something, um, I think, when they were, even when they were champions. So there is some uh, making up to do. And then the other team that I really like is Roma, play against Zoria, CSK Sofia again. And then Bodo Glimt, which gave Milan a real run for the money, but they uh, didn't have, they had Hauge back then still. Um, there are two groups that stick out to me. That is Slavia, Feyenoord, Union and Maccabi Haifa. 
Um, very, very balanced group, I, I would say. And also Spurs did not get a relatively easy, didn't get an easy group, but they still should uh, qualify with Ren and Vitesse, uh, which probably will make it for the second spot. So I would say let's go uh, group by group. I thought um, I sort them here by the chances of qualifying for a knockout round. We see group A. Maccabi Tel Aviv slightly ahead of Lusk uh, and then uh, Helsinki and Alashgert. I was surprised to see Partizan that high up, but I checked the ratings for Partizan are really good. I did not get full ratings, so it is mostly ELO ratings now because I didn't find good betting out so far. And the second part is, of course, that uh, the SPI ra rating uh, for those teams does not really exist yet. So maybe those ratings are a little bit skewed, but at the moment it's Partizan again ahead of Ghent. I Personally, will probably switch them. Roma, clear fav favorites in their group. Bode, deservedly, I think, is there. Although, uh, don't sleep on Zoria Luhansk, I have to say. That's a Ukrainian team. They are not uh, too, to be discarded. AZ, uh, head of Cluj, makes sense. Jablonets and Randers should be outsiders. And then, Union is actually favored. Pot 3 team being favored, have that in mind. Uh, ahead of Slavia and Feyenoord, sounds maybe about right, although because Feyenoord uh, still need to find us out, but I think Feyenoord could spring an upset. Then Copenhagen, um, uh, Copenhagen against uh, ahead of Pauk, also tight, makes kind of sense. And as I said, Spurs should easily win this group. Ren over Vitesse makes also sense. And then the last group, Basel, ahead of Karabakh. So uh, we have to see there. Overall favorites are, of course, Spurs, kind of sizable ahead of Roma. And at the moment, we're looking at the Spurs against the Roma final in many ways, which would be interesting, you know, who is coaching uh, Roma? Mourinho. So I'd be interested to see. The other thing that I see in the 20, top 20, 20 list ahead of the season, I see Lusk in there. That I did not expect. Uh, as for winners and losers, Cannot really say much here, but but I see Feyenoord is definitely not the winner, having a pot two such a flat curve as is Union, they probably would be further up. Moving to the Europa League, where we had the following pot, and if you look at the teams, I mean pot one, uh, that sounds very much like Champions League material in many ways. I think most of these have been in the last two seasons in the Champions League. Even pot two is classic Europa League. Pot three, I would say so too, and pot four um, also. I think it is. Uh, it's. I mean, especially look look from the Austrian perspective with Rapid and Sturm in pot four. We're looking at there is not an easy group in there, and both teams did really not get easy. Groups. Um, we see here the uh, eight, 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 eight groups. I mean, the group B with Monaco, PSV, and Real Sociedad, a really, really uh, attractive group. Uh, what else? We have Napoli and Leicester to, to get in a group, uh, but they have uh, two easy opponents, uh, easier opponents, I shouldn't call it easy, easier opponents below. Um, we have Lazio, Olympique de Marseille, Galatasaray, sounds rather interesting. Um, a very green group is Group G with Bayer, Leverkusen is red and then all green teams with Celtic, Betis and Ferenc Varos. Uh, Rapid will have missed, uh, uh, was missing and Rapid got then Zagreb, Genk and uh, West Ham, Rapid. West Ham will be very, very, very happy with this group, I have to say. So uh, let's run through all three groups by chances. Lyon and Rangers, the favorites in that group, uh, don't sleep on the other two, though. Uh, especially the support that Brunkby has uh, will, could carry them a little bit. Uh, group B, I think that is the most exciting group, and Sturm definitely is not happy in there. Real Sociedad have PSV and Monaco. That was a little bit surprising to me, but also, uh, let's see, when PSV and Monaco had real ambitions to get into the Champions League and probably should have made a Real Sociedad is a great team from Spain although I think in Europe they're not doing all that well uh, Napoli and Leicester will don't, don't dominate their, their group uh, similar to Frankfurt and Olympiakos although Fenerbahce might have a say I'm a little bit uh, in always I still when I hear Turkish and Russian teams I still think they might be really good but in the last two three years they have been really dropping so uh, be careful there Antwerp is a sleeper team in that group I would have to say knowing what, what they did last season Lazio of Marseille and Galatasaray I mean that's a group that sounds good but um, probably Lazio will should have it relatively easy if they take it seriously. Uh, the next group is a very tight one. I actually would even say that although Cervenas Vesda is only in third here, 
I can see them very well qualifying ahead of Braga or Midtjylland. So uh, curious for that. Uh, Leverkusen over Betis and then Celtic and Ferenc Varos and then West Ham. And as I said, they will be very happy with the group. They are very much favored ahead of Henk, uh, Genk, Dinamo Zagreb and Rapid. Overall, yes, I said West Ham is happy. They are top. West Ham, that, 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 that's the other one. It's a little bit West Ham is at, the, at this moment... Uh, according to all the ratings that I have, the favorite to win the Europa League ahead of Napoli. Before the draw, it was Napoli, but Napoli got uh, a little bit tougher draw because they have to play Leicester as well. So that might put them into a playoff for the round of 16, where you have to play it in a Champions League team, which uh, will not be a straightforward uh, story. We have uh, rounded out the top five by Real Sociedad, Leicester and Real Betis. So um, I leave the top 20 up there. So this is it from me for those two other European competitions. As I said, I am very excited about the Champions League this year. I will follow these two as well because I think there is always, because there will be so, so many games, it will always be fun to watch this one. Um, and, we, uh, and, and I'm sure there are interesting games in there. Um, so you will get my reviews of these two. I will definitely follow them, you know. Lask is playing in the end. There, what else can you expect? And then there is Park, there's Roma, there's Napoli. So, all teams that I really, really like. And let's see. I want to hear your thoughts on the Europa League and the Europa Conference League uh, in general, on the draw. What do you expect from these comp, 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 comp competitions? Um, and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!